everyone. So I am here with Crystal Butler, who is um, by vocation a community coordinator, a devout Christian who serves or who has served in her church as a worship leader, a dance minister, and has now um, took the step to enter into ministry training. Um, she's currently a minister in training. And so I invited her to have this conversation with me about loss. And um, with Crystal, I always, with Crystal, it's um, this worship leader thing. The fact that she was a worship leader has always kind of stood out to me. And so um, I know when you're a worship leader, uh, Crystal, you have to encourage a lot of people. People in your congregation can be going through so much and you have to really decide how you want to minister to them. You know, you're choosing your songs. And even in the midst of choosing your songs and you're singing and leading worship, the Holy Spirit might inspire you to say specific things in that moment to encourage them. Um, but today, what I want to talk about, along, along the same lines of encouragement, but specifically for loss, right? Because when you're on, on stage singing, you're, you're encouraging. As a minister in the future or even now you're going to have your your main responsibility is going to be to build up and to encourage people and i know loss is something that we all experience um and especially during this time there, there are lots of different kinds of losses that people experience and i just want to before i even get into those into the ways that people are losing and grieving i just wanted to know um how well before I ask you first of all how you would minister to someone who has recently lost I wanted to know what has been your first experience with loss um my first experience with loss like close loss was recently last year May 2023 um my husband and I lost our firstborn daughter at two and a half months old. So that's something that, you know, people don't normally expect, especially for your first child. Like that was a big one. Yeah. Right. So so after you had the child two months later, you experienced this loss. So can you tell me what was it like? What did that feel like in in that moment? Well, you know, you and I are believers. So um, I took the opportunity, like during the pregnancy, there had been, you know, bad doctor's reports, but like there were bad doctor's reports, but at the same time, I could see God's hand on my child during during the pregnancy. So I felt as though our faith was getting stronger going through the process and then she was born and she wasn't born the the way that the doctors anticipated anticipated her to be born so that was like thank you Jesus thank God like you're doing it you know so we even though it was rough I did I feel like I did everything in my power to stay grounded in the word and I did everything that the word says. You pray, believe, ask, and God's going to come through for you. But a lot of the time, we don't leave room for God's will. And that was the tough part, accepting God's will. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was very unexpected. We didn't think that she was going to pass at almost three months. Um especially because, I mean, they gave her the life expectancy of one to three months. So every month we were like, ah, one month down, two months down. And then unfortunately we didn't make it to three, but it was the biggest devastation of my life. I have to say, I'm only 30 years old. And that is not something that I could have predicted to be on my bingo card. Right. Um, so, 
I don't know if I answered your question. I'm sorry. I don't know yeah. if you wanted me to go into more detail. No, no, no. That's good. That's good. You answered okay. it. I mean, it's pretty accurate what you felt like when that happened. It was like a shocker. You were so you weren't expecting it. Um, no. so it definitely caught caught you off guard. And that's that's how loss that's how loss happens. It's never something that we expect or we anticipate. Um, but I wanna I wanna find out how you viewed yourself at the beginning at, at that time when you first experienced that loss. I want to ask you that, but I realized that we didn't pray before we started. So I'm going to pray right now. Amen. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this experience and this exchange that is about to take place between Crystal and I and whoever is going to be able to look at this. I thank you for Crystal's life. I thank you for her husband, oh God, that in all things that you will be glorified through their lives and even through this experience. I invite your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to anoint this conversation, Lord. Anoint Crystal, oh God, for the message that you placed in her heart and in her soul, Lord. Let the peace of Christ rest on her heart and her mind, even as she shares her testimony right now. And guide me, Holy Spirit, even as I begin to ask questions. Um, have your way in this interview and and let your spirit rest on it and let your spirit and your hope and your strength and your comfort rest on those who might be struggling in this way that might look on this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. <laughs> we should have started that way, but I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to ask you, when that happened, you you lost the child like did you well actually before we get there you how did you if you're comfortable sharing how did you realize that your child passed how what happened did you wake up and find something so what happened was she had she was in the NICU which is the neonatal intensive care unit for about my husband knows the days I think it's 52 days so that's like almost two months is it like I got yeah almost two months and so we brought her home thank god for the time that we had home with her for we, it was maybe two weeks and then we had to go back into the hospital because we found out that she was not sent home with the correct supplies I'll, I'll leave it at that because I don't know you know what may come of that but she was not sent home with the correct supplies so they wanted to admit her back into the hospital until they you know were able to send us home with the correct um supplies for her and then uh so we were in the hospital with her maybe almost two weeks and she was doing fine she was on this new machine and she she slept through the night we woke up to her crying and I'm sorry, this is, a, this might be a trigger warning for someone. Oh, we woke up to her crying and, you know, she was having uh, an episode, which you call, which we call medically a vagal episode where they compare it to an adult, like say someone punched you in your stomach. Mm -hmm. but and you're like you gasp with air but you're an adult you have the capacity in your lungs you can quickly um uh, recover babies infants can't always recover so quickly so she had had those previously because she had been struggling with her breathing that 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 was the uh the issue that she was dealing with and so you know she had this this episode many of times unfortunately and she just bounced back every time. Unfortunately, this time they couldn't they couldn't get her back. So um, I was thanking God that we were in the hospital with her because, you know, so most hospitals are like, oh, only one person, only one parent can stay overnight. But I I advocated because we had dealt with some issues with the hospital and I said you guys have interrupted our family dynamic at home 
both my husband and I need to be here with her overnight. So thank God we were both there already. And um, unfortunately, she was not able to recover. And my husband, so while they're trying to get her back, I know myself. So I know that I can't see certain things because they'll etch in my mind forever and replay. But my husband, oh, thank God for him. He's very strong in that area. And even if he may not be strong in that area, he sacrificed that for um, to be there for his daughter and to make sure that, you know, somebody, one of us was in there with her while things were happening. So he was inside of the room. I was outside of the room, but the doors are clear so I can see. I can see the monitors. I can see when her heartbeat's going up. Her respiratory rate is going up. I'm on the phone with my my family praying, 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 praying. And I'm thinking, oh, she's going to be all right. And then I see all the medical staff start to like just come out. And then my husband's face changes and I'm, I rush in there. And it's like I grabbed his hand at the at the right moment. And then the doctor tells us, unfortunately, you know, Faith has passed away. Faith is her name. I even went to the point, Lisa, of saying, Faith, you hear your mother calling you, right? You need you have to get back up. You have to get back up. I almost felt like I was having an outer body experience. It sounds like a freaking movie. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Like just even explaining it to you right now, I'm literally talking to my baby. Hey, you got you got to get up. We got to show these people the glory of God. Like right. you're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be the testimony. You've been defying the odds this entire time. And then my husband breaks down. She's not responding, and I just was like, I just fell apart. And thankfully, you know, my my parents got there pretty quickly. My bishop and my pa- pastor got there pretty quickly. Uh, my best friend and her fiance got there pretty quickly. So we weren't left alone. We had almost immediate support. And the staff was supportive too, but it, there's nothing like having your family there. But I just, I went through so many emotions sitting there. They let you hold your child for I'm not even sure how long, but I was able, we were able to sit with her for a while after she passed, holding her, just holding her, holding her. And I just, I went from being in a daze to crying, to screaming, to just all over the, all over the place. And it's just something that I would have never, I would have never thought that would happen to me. Hey, I pay my tithes. I'm very, I'm I could, I'm not perfect, but I, I I'm at church. There are a lot of people my age who are not involved. There are a lot of people my age who have, who have been members of my church and are no longer members or just straight away. And you know they're able to have children. Some other people, I just have to be real. Some other children, some other people are able to have children, and it's out of wedlock. And their children are fine. These are all the things that I said to God. Talk about it. It's real. I've seen seen people who have sacrificed their life and committed their life to Christ and struggle. And then I've seen people do it the wrong way, knowing the right way and still choosing the wrong way. And they're able to have children and to live their life, right? Right. So what you're saying is, is I understand it's real. It's real. And that takes me into my next question, which is how did you view God at that (laughs) moment? When you, when you think about the fact that there are people that are not doing things to honor God and here you are completely committed to Christ and you're struggling and suffering in this way, what is, how do you view God and how does, how does that, does that change your view of him or does it change your view of yourself? I'm always transparent with with people when they ask me this question. Um, I'm not sure it changed my view of God, but I was very angry with him. And I was honest about the fact that I was angry with him. With him. Right. Uh, and no, let me stop you, you right there. 
when you shared with people that you were angry with God, what was what was the response? <laughs> Some people are very taken aback. Um, you know, a lot of I would say more seasoned folk, you know, they're they're they were taught you don't question God. How dare you get angry with God? They 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 sometimes have this complex of um you know, thinking that if you question God or if you have any kind of emotion towards God that's not butterflies and rainbows, that you're disrespecting him and you're disrespecting him purposely. And that's not the case at all. When, and, and when I t- Hello, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I have to, and I go into saying like, first of all, God created me the way that he created me for a purpose. And he knows everything about me. He knew that I was going to be in this situation and he knew I was going to react this way. He knew I was going to feel this way. You think my little big mad emotions because I lost my child is intimidating to our big, great and powerful, omnipresent, omniscient God of the universe of all creation, you think that intimidates him? No. It does not intimidate him. And I feel like I also say to people, it's better to be honest because God will honor your honesty. And I found that because I was honest with God, right after I'm telling him I'm mad at him, I'm saying, but I need you. So you gotta come through, you have to do something. Because yeah. If I keep going down this hole, I'm not going to make it. My husband is not going to make our marriage is not going to make it. So I need you. I don't I don't know what you can do at this point to help me. But I'm I'm being honest with you. And that's where I feel like things started to uh, my perspective started to shift about it and and rightfully so because first of all you said two things first we need to be honest with god and two we need to continue crying out and reaching out to him because if you look at the scripture let's and david is prime example hello david did everything except cuss god out (laughs) he did everything right he said you know, why have you forsaken me in one section, in one Psalm? He said, Psalm three, we were just looking at it this week. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be would say of my soul, there is no mm. for him in God. Mm. Right? And there are other Psalms where he's saying worse things like, mm. Lord, take their necks off. Like he's, he's, he's like, this is, this is the real, this is, this is how I feel right now. And what always amazes me about David is when he's real, God meets him in that place and changes his story. Hello. So he, David says, he says all these things. And then there's a, there's a Selah, there's a pause where he's like, okay, I'm tired. I got out when I needed to get out. And now the Lord starts to fill him with what he needs. And then you'll see a lot of his songs, they start off with this anger and this pain. And in the end, it's like, but I praise you, God. But God, I worship God. you. Yeah, but you're my strength, right? He he shows the reality. And a lot of, I hear, I hear this, a lot of people say, God can only help the real you. He can't help the person that you're pretending to be. He can't help um, the person you wish you were. Absolutely. He meets you where you are. And if and where you are is anger, if where you are is frustration, it's okay to be honest about that. So that was and I think sorry. I think I forgot to add this part. I was uh, the reason why I was angry, of course, that's the obvious reason, but I was more angry because this was not a game for us. Like We really prayed and believed God that she would be a miracle, that she would bury her parents and that she would shut the mouths of the doctors who did not know who he was. We really believed that thing. And when you know God can do it and he chooses not to, 
<laughs> talk about it. So now tell me now how you how you looked at God because you were honest. You 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 cried out to him. You said, you know, God, I need you. Was there ever a time where you questioned who he was or if he loved you or anything like that? I never questioned him being God per se, because I, I feel like I already had a good foundation like of a relationship with him. So I never questioned him being God, but I did question his decisions. Like why why? What why? What is the purpose? And and, and it, it wasn't even more so about like why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to my husband? It was more so like, why would you do this to my child? My innocent three month old child who did not complain. She was a very sweet baby. She only cried like if something, if she really wasn't feeling well, like very, very cool, calm and collected baby. So I was more so upset because I felt like my child didn't deserve that. I wasn't even focused on me. I felt like she didn't deserve that. So I was questioning like, why, why would you do that to an innocent baby? To, 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 for what? I still struggle with that sometimes. I mean, I know he's going to get the glory out of this prayerfully. Right. He has to get the glory out of it, but to a baby who didn't ask to be here, that that that's tough that part was tough for you so some time has passed since and i just want to know what you 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 went through the anger the frustration the pain questioning god being upset that you know this happened not just to you and your husband but to your child now where like what what is your resolve right how do you what what does it look like now after a year for you when you think about the situation has anything changed for you i and that can be oh, anything sad. from your emotional from your emotional understanding or your or even your perspective on life or people or in God, has anything changed after about a year? So, or so? much, <laughs> so oh, much has changed about me. Um, I feel like I'm not the same crystal pre this happening. I'm not, I'm not the same person at all. And I think some people have a hard time understanding that and accepting that, but I can't be, that's one of the things that has shifted in me. I can't how care. <laughs> what are people noticing about you that has shifted? When you go through something as devastating as that, and the Lord keeps your mind, uh, the Lord allows you to still function. The Lord allows you to still be, the fact that me and my husband, we're not just still married. We are like so much tighter than we were before this situation ha happened. The fact that he's blessing our marriage, like just realizing the blessing in that and being kept by God has a, what is it? How can I say it? It has caused me to have a very low tolerance for in inauthenticity. It has caused me to have a very low tolerance for foolishness and for people who and not to say that I'm I am not better than anyone. That's that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not perfect. I just told you I was very mad at God. Um but people who like per se play with him you know what I'm saying right. because I was I know that I wasn't playing with him and he allowed something like this to happen to me and but still kept my mind after the fact 
and and still blesses after the fact you know so um yeah I, I just don't have the I don't have the capacity for foolishness anymore and <laughs> I, I used to be so. I used to be very um what is it accommodating you know we Lisa and I went to school together so you know for counseling and stuff so that that is a trait that I've always had mm. and so I guess that trait it kind of made me like a people pleaser in a way even though counselors should not be people pleasers right but we learned that it, I, that's what I was before and that is no longer who I am and yeah, I, I think and a, I, lot I, of, a lot of us who who have this heart for people we automatically want to please them even if it means that we get hurt in the process that our, oh yeah that our desires are stifled or even that even if it means that um that other person doesn't get to see the right thing the right person, mm. right? We, mm -hmm. do it. we do it because we want, we want them to be happy. And even though we want them to be happy, we're suffering, but they're also suffering in a way that they haven't realized yet because they're losing out on something that they may need for their future. And Absolutely. if we realize that and we, we want to be nice, then they're ultimately they're missing out. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah, definitely feel you on, on the people. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I lost I got distracted with that <laughs> um oh you were asking about my how has my perspective changed yeah I mean so that was one thing about my personality but the other thing I would say is that um I just try to focus on the fact that I don't know what her life would have been like if we continued down the path that we were going if she would have suffered more and that's not something that I would want as much as it hurts every single day still that I don't have my baby um I would much rather her be healed on the other side in heaven than to suffer with me which is a really really hard pill to swallow as a mother yeah I so. can't say that I I would I would say that to me if I'm honest right so I definitely have to commend you for that. Um, it takes a lot of strength that you would have that in mind, even though you're you you would suffer obviously um, with with that desire. It's and, definitely the Lord. It's not me at all. Yeah, that's <laughs> I, what, that's I, what I, I realized. I do want to really say do. I feel like you definitely you and your husband definitely um, handled it in a way that's. I think is um, commendable because I've heard of families who've lost babies and the marriage has not been the same. Um, and so I definitely have to commend you guys on that, on, on how you even did that. And I know you said a lot of it was prayer and continually reaching out to the Lord. Um, but it's, it's definitely a testimony to the faithfulness of God that even in the midst of great loss, he's still able to keep you. He's still able to keep your mind. He's still able Absolutely. To, to preserve the purpose that he has for you. Cause like you said, you would have never agreed to go into minister and training unless this happened. So even in the midst of all of that, God still, he had a plan for you from, from since before the foundations of the earth. And even though this great loss happened that probably tried to take your mind and try to snatch you up out of here, you know, he still has this intention for you and you're still going after that. And he's still making sure that there's a place set for you so that you can do that. So I praise God. I praise God for that. Thank God. It's almost like, um, it's like, how dare I say no to the call? How dare I say no to anything that he wants me to do after going through something like this, but still being kept? And that, you know, like, I wasn't always at this point, you know, I don't even know if I mentioned it, but in the beginning, I stopped going to church. My husband was going to church consistently. Like we grieved 
totally different, which could have been a another, you know, thing that went into play that could have torn us apart. And I was like, maybe I stopped going for like a month. And then I finally went back and the first Sunday I'm like, I don't feel anything, but I'm meeting you here. So I need you to meet me. And it was maybe like the third Sunday. And then it's like, this is why I encourage people to not miss um, going to church or a Bible study or a prayer, whatever it is that your church is having, um, one, the, the, the word says forsake not the sibling, assembling of yourselves, but you never know what's in the house for you. And that Sunday, I had no idea that I would get like the breakthrough I needed to, all right, it was almost as if I was in the grave with my child. And that Sunday, I'll never forget my pastor. Hold on a church second. Is all, I'm sorry. I want to go back to something that you said before. You, I want you to get to that point, but I want to go back to something you said before because you said don't miss church or anything that um, is happening in your church. And I want to add on to that or or just yeah, add on kind of to that because there's very specific things that we do for our spiritual formation, right? And a lot of times the temptation is mm -hmm. when life gets starts lifing we don't do the things that keep us and so i want to say so you you're a person you're in church on sundays you're in bible study you're you're fellowshipping your iron is sharpening iron when you fellowship right because i i'm one person when it gets to a certain point i'll be the first one to be like oh they're not gonna see me no more <laughs> Cause I'll give you a certain amount of chances. And then after that, I'm like, oh no, we forsaken the assembly. We forsaken <laughs> sure, okay? I'm the main one. I'm good, to cut. I'm good for a cutoff, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not just, and I think my mindset, the times that I've pulled away from the church is forsaking the assembly of the saints is like a shallow mindset. But when you are forsaking the assembly, assembly of the saints, it's you're not in a place where iron can sharpen you, right? You can be at That's home right. online and that can be good for a season because God knows I'm an online worshiper, all right? That's what I prefer. But <laughs> if there's no opportunity for the iron to sharpen. It's not just come together and then disappear. It's come together and strengthen, encourage, right? Absolutely. So, I, that's why I wanted to say, don't just go to church and then be like, oh, well, I'm here. Unless that's mm -hmm. where, um, unless that's the place that you're in, where like you just, it, you're just in that low place, and there are times where you're in that low place where it's like, hey, I'm, I, you said come, I'm here, I, I got nothing, and I've right. been in that place many times, right? So continue to to not forsake the assembly of the uh, of the assembling of the saints, and then as you go, you you said that now there was a the third Sunday that you decided to go back that God met you, so yes. talk about that. What happened? So uh, the service was over. I felt like it was, you know, it was cool. It was a cool service. The sermon was great. My bishop preaches well every Sunday. So I, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. But as I'm picking up my bag to walk out, my pastor's like, can I pray for you? And I'm like, okay. So she starts praying for me. She starts speaking into me and telling, telling me where I am mentally I haven't been talking to anyone about what I've been, you know, okay, we were just at the funeral, the home going maybe a month ago. And, but I hadn't talked to anybody really since. Like I wasn't telling them, uh-oh, are you there? Lisa? Oh no. 